Hey everyone, thanks for checking out History X. Thanks for joining this morning. I wanted to tell you guys a story that I've known a little bit about, well, probably for about six months now. And, you know, I'm doing this live, but as soon as it gets posted on the YouTube channel, you know, when everyone can view it, see it at their leisure, I think you're going to find it pretty fascinating. And what I'm talking about is this. It is a Northrop Grumman duck, but not just, we're not just talking about any Grumman duck. Obviously, this is a uh, amphibious biplane that was used during World War II for all kinds of things, primarily search and rescue. What we're talking about is this Grumman duck. And this amphibious plane, this Grumman duck, was part of or on board a U.S. Coast Guard cutter named the Northland. And it was assigned to Greenland. And this picture right here is the last known photo of this plane. Now, what's the big deal? Why is this so fascinating? Well, these two guys right here, Lieutenant uh, John Pritchard, and his radio man, a guy by the name of Benjamin Bottoms, they were sent on a rescue mission, and they never returned. Uh, a third person that was on board their plane, a guy by the name of, and I want to make sure I get this right, Corporal Lauren Howorth, he was one of the guys that they were sent to rescue, and on the way back, obviously, they crashed somewhere on the glacier of Greenland. So the Grumman Duck, fascinating airplane. Obviously, it's got a float uh, below the fuselage, biplane, um, two wings. And to fly around Greenland in a plane like this, pretty, pretty crazy. It took a lot of bravery, took a lot of guts. And obviously, this crew had it to do that. Now, why why were they flying around uh greenland uh here's a here's a great picture of the the grumman duck being lifted aboard the northland uh fascinating story like i said that's the last known picture so why were they flying around greenland well they were looking for the crew of a b17 and this b17 had crashed while i was actually searching for another plane the crew was on the surface of the uh, glacier. They were trying to survive. And actually, there were all kinds of planes. It's, it's, it's incredible. There were all kinds of planes that were going down over Greenland. Why was Greenland such a big deal? Well, you can see here, uh, it's in the North Atlantic. Planes from the United States were trying to make their way to England as part of what's called Operation Bolero. So the effort to resupply England or to get England supplied to basically put up a fight against Germany, that was called Operation Bolero. It almost sounds very similar to what we're doing with uh, Ukraine against Russia. So Operation Bolero, in order to get planes to England, they had to leave the United States, fly to northern Canada, cross over to Greenland, refuel, then get to Ireland, refuel, and then finally make their way to England. Well, Greenland is no picnic to fly over. Storms, the weather's awful, and a lot of planes would go down. Most famously, the planes of the Lost Squadron, which comprised of six P-38 Lightnings and two B-17 bombers. They, they took off while flying over Greenland, ran into just incredibly low visibility. They turned around, trying to make their way back, ran low on fuel, and they had to ditch. So why am I telling you the story? Well, a guy by the name of Lou Sapienza, I was talking to him earlier this week. Uh, 
for those of you that are aware, um, I have a pretty unhealthy fascination with the Keybird, a B-29 bomber that also went down in Greenland, belly landed when they went low on fuel. And that was right after World War II in 1946. So I was talking to Lou about the conditions in Greenland, what it would have been like to try and uh, rescue this crew. And he was telling me the story of the Grumman duck that I had just showed you. Now, Lou, Lou is a pretty fascinating character because he was part of the expedition to locate and hopefully get a P-38 off the glacier from that lost squadron. And they did it. If you are aware of the story of uh, the Glacier Girl, which is a P-38 Lightning. I don't think I have a picture of it here. But they actually did extricate this, this P-38 from the glacier. They restored it. It took about 10 years. And that is how we have Glacier Girl today. You'll see it flying at air shows, that type of thing. So like I said, Lou is a pretty fascinating character. He was part of that expedition. And when it comes to the search for those three servicemen that went down with that Grumman duck, he actually led an expedition to Greenland. He's led several, actually, to try and find this Grumman duck that is buried in the glacier. Now, this image here is, I believe, from 2012. And it's documented in this book. And let me... So this book called Frozen in Time, a guy by the name of uh, Mitchell Zukov wrote the book and he was part of the expedition. It's, it's, it's an incredible story. If you haven't read it, I, I'm sorry, if you haven't read it, I strongly recommend it because it tells the story of these, uh, hold on a second here. I want to go back. It tells the story of Where's their picture? Bear with me a second here. I'm going to I'm going to back up because it's an important thing to remember. Here we go. It tells the story of how these guys became lost. You've got Luce Lieutenant John Pritchard on the left. He was the pilot of the duck. You've got his radio man Benjamin Bottoms on the right hand side, as well as Corporal Holworth, who was the first person that they had rescued. And as I said, they are still missing. The plane has never been found. People have think they've located thought that they've located it, but nothing definitive. So the whole mission of what Lou Sapiens is trying to accomplish is bringing these guys back. And so I find the whole thing fascinating. I find this book fascinating. If you're interested in reading about uh, the story, the link will be in the description below. I highly recommend you check it out. Um, anyway, in order to try and locate these guys, and this book has, let's see if I can get it there, all kinds of maps information you know maps that were, were created during world war ii by people that were trying to rescue these guys as well as the crew of the b-17 bomber it's almost like a it's almost like a treasure hunt it's definitely a mystery okay i got a little off track there but let's get back to the story now the grumman duck that went lost it went down after it had after uh, Pritchard and Bottoms had made it to the crew of that down B-17. They brought back one of the injured crew members, Howorth, got him on board. Now, here's a fascinating part of the story. This Grumman duck landed on the glacier gear up. You can see in this picture that there uh, it does have landing gear that can de be deployed. So it can either be towed out of the water once it lands, or it has the possibility of landing on a runway. Well, in order to rescue the crew of this B-17 bomber, these guys landed gear up. In other words, these guys landed on their float 
on the ice to try and reach this crew of the down B-17. It's, I mean, it's mind blowing. It had never been done before and they were able to pull it off. Not once, but twice. They actually made it to the B-17 a first time, got two members of that crew back to the Coast Guard cutter, the Northland, and then they went back to try and get more. And that's how they had Howarth on board. But as I said, the weather got too bad. They became, dis they became disoriented and they went down. Uh, here's the picture of the Grumman Duck being lifted onto the Northland. It's incredible what these guys did, how they risked their lives to rescue these crews that would go down in Greenland. Um, Greenland's just an awful, awful place. And that's why I was talking to Lou Sapienza. Now, Lou is a pretty unconventional guy. And so he's he's gone up there and they went up there in, uh, as I said, 2010, or I'm sorry, 2012, to try and locate the Grum and Duck. They were using technology like ground penetrating radar to investigate anomalies in the ice to locate this Grum and Duck under the ice and then hopefully then, you know, get some definitive proof. Yes, it's down there and we know where these three servicemen are so we can bring them home. And this is at the time 70 years later, if my math is correct, 2012. Now, they, using the ground penetrating radar, they were able to find, well, first of all, they were able to, through the process of elimination, eliminate sites that had a possibility of where this Grumman duck could be. But they found one particular site that, you know, had a signal that came back. They bored several holes into the ice and they actually identified using a camera that they snaked down the hole. They identified cabling that was consistent with the Grumman duck. So that was very positive. But since that time, they haven't been able to relocate the site. Glaciers move slowly, but they move. The the opportunity to find a plane under 30, 40 feet of ice is hard. If you're 18 inches off and you bore a hole down, you might not ever see it. So Lou wants to go back, but he's got a different method this time that I think is fascinating. And I liken it to the search for the Titanic. Now, everybody knows the story of the Titanic. Went down in 2000, I'm sorry, went down in 1912, I think it was. And there was a guy by the name of Dr. Robert Ballard that had an incredibly unique approach to find the, finding the Titanic because everybody was looking for the Titanic. They were, um, you know, coming up with all kinds of different technologies that wasn't working. So let's let's think about this. The Titanic is huge, but on the ocean floor, it's pretty small. It's incredibly small. And so people were coming up with just mind-blowing technologies at the time using deep penetrating sonar, side scan sonar to try and find the Titanic. But in the end, they never found it. They came damn close. And hindsight being 2020, some of these technologies were right over the, the Titanic, but they never could pick it up. So what did Dr. Robert Ballard do? He decided, hey, I don't want to find the Titanic. Obviously, I want to locate it, but I don't want to try and search for it. Instead, I want to search for its debris field, which is a million times larger than the Titanic itself. And he was obviously very successful. He found the Titanic. So now the search for this Grumman duck buried in the ice. Lou Sapienza has a very, what I consider to be a very similar approach to finding what happened to this plane and the crew members aboard. He 
is basically not going to search for the plane, but he's going to search for evidence of the plane in a much larger area. And I think he's got a very, very good chance of being successful. Like Dr. Robert Ballard searching for the Titanic, he's keeping it pretty, he's keeping his cards close to the vest. He's keeping it pretty secret. But as I said, I, th I think he's got a very, very good chance of finding it. Now, his effort is called the Fallen American Veterans Foundation. You can check it out, www.favf.us, the Fallen American Veterans Foundation. His goal isn't necessarily to recover the plane, the plane that's frozen in the ice. His goal is to recover the servicemen that went down with that plane. Lieutenant Pritchard's, Radio Men Bottoms, and Corporal Howarth, um, which I think is a really noble effort, and it's something that should be supported. And if you think about it, no matter how many times it takes to find this plane and find these, I mean, we shouldn't give up. Everything should be done to try and recover the bodies of these servicemen and bring them home. I think, let's see. Lou also, there's also a Facebook page for the Fallen American Veterans Foundation. Now, what can you do to try and help? Well, obviously donations are what an expedition like this requires most. And you can check out uh, www.favf.us. They've got a donate page there. You can go to their Facebook page. You know, it could even be, you know, donating $2, $3, $5, whatever to help this effort to uh, recover these servicemen. So it's a fascinating story. It's a mystery that, you know, who doesn't, who doesn't like mysteries, right? To try and find this plane buried in the ice that has eluded everybody for decades uh, is is amazing. And I get a big thrill out of these stories because, you know, we can have fascinations with fighter planes. We can have fascinations with uh, naval vessels, but the actual search that goes on these days to find these relics from World War II, I think is fascinating. You know, they, they finally located the USS Johnston, the destroyer that fought just incredibly bravely uh, off the coast of Samar in the Battle of Samar in the uh, Lady Gulf. And so if we have a fascination with World War II, you can definitely support these expeditions to find these ships, or in this case, to find this plane. So I strongly recommend you check out www.favf.us. The link will be in the description below. Um, check out the Facebook page. It's a fascinating story. Um, Real quick, uh, real quick, um, Flying Fortress RC. I, um, this guy, you know, making comments on the YouTube channel, I think is fantastic. So we talked about Glacier Girl. Um, actually, let me pull up that picture. Where is it? Yeah, here we go. So this is a fascinating story. If you guys aren't aware, the Lost Squadron went down. They all... Uh, it uh, ran out of fuel and they had to ditch. So you can't really say they crashed, but they went down and all of them survived. It took about 10 days or two weeks to finally get them off the ice, but they recovered this P-38 Lightning. In 1992, if I'm not mistaken, and restored it. And now it's Glacier Girl, the P-38 that we know today. So... um yeah, Flying Fortress RC, you know, seen it, uh, Glacier Girl flying at Thunder over Michigan, which is a pretty interesting uh, air event. Um, yeah, man, thanks for, uh, thanks for the comment. So, final, final word, I, uh, at risk of uh, repeating myself, if you guys have a few moments, check out the Fallen American Veterans Foundation, Lou Sapienza. And 
check out his effort to bring these three servicemen home, to locate their Grumman duck and bring the three servicemen home. I really appreciate you guys uh, joining me this Saturday morning. I hope I've brought you know, an interesting story that you weren't aware of to light. We all like mysteries. We all like, you know, the search for lost World War II aircraft. So check out the search for, um, you know, check out the search for uh, Lieutenant John Pritchard, Radio Men Benjamin Bottoms, and Corporal Lauren Holworth in Greenland. My name is Ken Stano. Thank you for checking out History Acts.